You have a prepaid call from an inmate at California. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. To accept this call, say or dial 5 now. Thank you for using. I'm looking for good pals and uh, just uh, any kind of correspondence, you know, uh, trying to build relationships, stuff like that, you know, trying to step outside these prison walls and let people know me and meet new people, you know. So that's what I'm hoping, hoping and looking forward to. Maybe, maybe change somebody's life, you know. So. So what do you go you by? Anything in the, uh, they call me trouble. Yeah. Trouble? Yeah, they call me trouble. What's your yes. nationality? I'm white. Were you ever a part of any gangs, prison gangs, yes. groups, uh, organizations? Yes. Yes. Yes, I was. Where are you from out here in the streets? I'm from Yuba City, California. Born and raised. Uh, I was born in Yuba City and then live in Oliver's, Linda, Yuba City, stuff like that. This call yeah. and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. What made you join the organization? Well, uh, at first, at first it was just doing time. I started, uh, I started doing time in YA at 13. Uh, I never, I never had any kind of dad, father figure, or anything like that. Uh, started getting arrested really young. I started my first crimes that I got arrested for was at nine years old. So I had no supervision and. I had no source of uh, of income or stability, so I just started hitting the streets. And then once the system got a hold of me, you know, uh, and, you know I didn't run my own people, then I was a victim. You know, in YA, most whites are victims. So I chose not to be a victim. What are you convicted of? Second degree murder. Uh, I got a. Uh, I got convicted of second degree murder on uh, on uh, July 3rd, 2010. Uh, I killed uh, Steve Lambert. How long was your sentence? I got a uh, 61 in life plus 26 year tail. My original sentence is 16 years, but I had uh, I had three prior stabbings that I've been convicted of. So they gave me 15 years of life for each one of those, and then they gave me 26 years of life for the uh, for the assault. So when you first got sentenced, and how you feel about it, and when you first went to prison and hit the main line, what was your mentality? What was my mentality? Uh, well, I first I came out of YA. I, well, I left I left Y California Youth Authority at 19. Uh, they tried to get me to stay there and do it till I was like 25, but I chose to go to prison instead. I, 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 cho I chose to uh, go to prison instead. And uh, so, like, my mentality was fucking. I came out of Y.A. I didn't care. I, in Y.A. we fought all the time, you know. Uh, so when I came to prison, I just tore shit up. I just volunteered for everything, you know. Uh, anytime there was any kind of issues, I was right there in the front line trying to be a part of it. What exactly is your position within the organization? Uh, I I started out I started out just running with the whites, uh, and then I started running with the key holders and stuff like that. Uh, most of my positions, I didn't run with my homeboys. Um, I knew my homeboys, but I was with the dudes that were running the yards. I started running my first yard at age like 22, 23. I ran uh, I ran Old Folsom at that age, but I had to support the most of the lifers and most of the. Uh, like the big cars, like the Sacramento cars, the Desto cars, the Stockton cars, they all they all pretty much allowed me to be in that position. But as I moved up, everything got to go through the brand, you know. Uh, so once I started doing shoot time and rubbing shoulders with those dudes, uh, I started accepting responsibility from them. So my mentality was, fuck it, though. I, I never thought I was getting out. Uh, there was a lot of shit that I I had behind me that I was feeling bad about, you know. When I when I was in the lower level prisons, I was just uh, I was just nobody, you know. I was I was a YA kid who didn't work, you know, volunteering for everything. Uh, it was really nothing. Uh, it was pretty violent coming out of YA, so 
everything that prison had to offer, like on the lower levels, was actually kind of easy. You know, uh, it didn't get more serious until I hit the more serious prisons like uh, Corcoran, High Desert, Salinas, you know, places like that. It didn't get more serious until that time. So, and then that's a different kind of ball game. You know, then you start rubbing shoulders with dudes that are actually in there for murder and more serious crimes. So, and then you're never getting out. I was under the impression that I was never going to get out. I didn't care, so that was my mentality. Can you elaborate on what kind of tattoos you have, and uh, did you earn them in any way, shape, or fashion? Uh, and can you, uh, uh, if you can, can you explain how you earn them? If you, if, if you can't, then that's fine. Well, uh, my whole body's covered with tattoos. I've actually had my head, my head and neck, my hands removed, but then I wouldn't put everything back on. When I was fighting my murder trial, I took off a lot of my tattoos uh, to try to. Uh, well, I was trying to. I was trying to fake out the jury, and make them think that I was a different kind of guy. Uh, but it didn't work. But uh, like most of my tattoos are just typical for the tattoos. Uh, the only ones that really matter, I have an angel on my shoulders. That's for my grandparents, and then my swastikas, my lightning bolts. Uh, those are the only things that that has to do with my political, with my political outlook, you know. Uh, and swaps because you don't really have to earn it, you just got to believe in them. Uh, a lot of prisons and a lot of, a lot of people are just putting them on them nowadays. I, I'm, I'm a tattoo artist, I've been a tattoo artist most of my life. I've actually worked in the industry on the streets and all that stuff. I don't do those political tattoos uh, just because of that. But uh, like mine, I actually earned them. I, I earned my bolts when I was 17. Uh, I came out of YA. My homeboys put my homeboys put my first set of bolts on me. But uh, those all come from violence, you know. You have to put in work to get those. A lot of people are just putting them on them now, but I actually earned mine. They're on the inside of my arm, so they're not really where you can see them. And they're about the size of my bicep. And then I have swastikas and stuff like that, but you know, they're all over my body. But that really doesn't matter. You don't you don't have to earn those. I have an iron cross, uh, and that's pretty much uh, a, a medal of honor. You know, I have that on my head. It's pretty much uh, it's first class, so it's pretty much you get you get those when you when you work in the trenches. Uh, so, like if you're really involved in the movement, that's how you get the first class. So, that's pretty much all that matters. Everything else is just prisoning. Were you ever a validated gang member? A day gamer, yes. I'm actually. Uh, I have an I have an FBI number, and uh, I've been involved in an organization. I was. I was originally. They were trying to validate me as a skinhead before, uh, as a Nazi little rider. Uh, but in 2001, I was taken off the prison line. Uh, I was taken off the prison line in High Desert, and I was validated as an associate to the Aryan Brotherhood. And then, uh, in 2000. 2003, I was officially validated as Aryan Brotherhood. So, it's actually on record. It's actually on file. So, and there's an FBI number to it. How did they evaluate? The, how did they validate you? What proof or evidence did they have uh, to validate well, you? The, the system can validate you for anything. Uh, association. Like me, I was running yards. Uh, I was calling hits. Uh, Pretty much, I was I was one of the head dudes on on, the, on that yard, and and those yards, the 180 yards, you can't run those yards without the Aryan Brotherhood's consent. You know, you have to have the Aryan Brotherhood's consent, and that's how you get in that position. Uh, that's how you, that's how the system got me. I was uh, making calls, and I decided I make I made some calls where I told everybody, anybody that turns down any mission, anything like that, uh, I'm going to have a hit. When I made that decision, I, I put that mandate that everybody puts in work, even the Christians. That's when they took me off the line. That's when they officially took me off the line, and uh, they had enough. They had enough uh, evidence through age wells and stuff like that to validate me as an associate. Okay, did you do an Indy Terminator shoe, and where you do an Indy Terminator shoe at? I I I done I done I started my Indy Terminator shoe in 2001 in High Desert. Uh, I got my indeterminate issue until 2004, and that's when I debriefed and stepped out. I, I stepped out during the RICO. Uh, the RICO was going on. 
in 2002-2003. The brothers that brought me in was uh, Tank. Uh, his name's Mike. At a, uh, like Hayward Barrier, Bay Area and Blue in Sacramento. Uh, those are the two that sponsored me. But when they brought me in, it's during the RICO Act, so the books are supposed to be closed because it, there was a lot of inner inner house cleanup. And uh, I would have been hit anyways if I would have stayed in, just because all the brothers that were leave, that were staying in California uh, were on different page than the ones that were going to the feds. So there was a lot of turmoil at the time. And the books were supposed to be closed. But they weren't. Everybody was doing their own thing. What are the rules and regulations of the organization? Uh, this call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. It's brand before anything, but uh, we have a lot of we have a lot of dealings with the, with the mob and other organizations. But you know they they say a lot of things. They say a lot of things, but as of right now, a lot of things have changed. A lot of the rules that that we applied and that we sent people on missions for and stuff like that. They're all changed now. The brand in California is not the same. Uh, we actually, the ones that, like, a lot of these I associated with that decided to drop out or went to the feds no longer consider the brand in California a valid a valid gang. So in the feds right now, we're not, California is not part of the brand. So they would have to, they would have to have problems if they were a step in the federal system. There's actually a separation here. Okay, what what constitutes an individual being removed from a yard? Uh, shit, it happens for everything. We we've done it over simplest things, you know. Uh, but any kind of violation of money, nope. Uh, they're they're even hitting people for uh, relationships on the street, you know. My uncle, my uncle, and my aunt were actually my uncle is sick Rick from uh, Bakersfield. He's my uncle. He's an Aryan Brotherhood. And that's my association, how I got in. I started speaking to some of his friends. But uh, they were involved in uh, the shooting in 89, stuff like that, where they targeted uh, CDC officers. So uh, that's what originally got the brand took it off the line, was that we had targeted uh, CDC officers and people's families. We actually crossed the line. We didn't hold the individual accountable. We started moving on to their families and uh, CDC officers. So that's what got us validated. But you can get hit over anything. You can get hit over anything. It's all about who who has the keys at the time. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Yeah. No, but that is, there's no there's no limit to what you can be hit for. I've seen people hit for the simplest things. Okay, what if an individual survives a removal? Where does he go from there? Uh, where does he go from there? It all depends. It all depends what you're... They're allowing buy, they're allowing buybacks right now. I don't approve of that, but they're allowing buybacks where you can buy your way back in. And, uh, it, tell, it costs around ten thousand dollars in support of your homeboys and stuff like that. Because there's a lot of things that don't make sense as far as like when people were removed. A lot of it was personal. Uh, it was, it, there was really no major fuck up. Uh, if you do survive a hit, it all depends on what you actually did to get hit. You know, you can come back. There have been people that came back, but every prison is different, and uh, it depends on who has the yard. And now that we got cell phones and all that shit, it's pretty easy to keep track of who's doing what. You know, so we're we're actually evolving too in prison. <laughs> who who would be chosen to go conduct a removal, and what would happen if they refuse uh, uh, to go conduct uh, a removal? Uh, well, I've actually had people escape on me because I tried to be nice about it. Uh, I've actually had people escape uh, in my earlier days, and uh, and that and that's really hard because as a key holder on the yard, I'm responsible for all that shit. If I make a bad call or I make a call that somebody else doesn't agree with, I can be hit as well. You know, so it's all about it's always about what the next man thinks. You know, on those on those higher prisons, uh, a lot of those dudes don't care about who they stab or what reason they're stabbing them for. You know. They'll, they'll just have anybody. Uh, but, like, some people do survive it, you know, and uh, now they got the fucking, uh, the PC system. It used to be they just ship it to another prison, but now they got the PC system. And people get an easy fucking escape out of it now. They don't have to deal with the consequences. 
California is actually getting about halfway, about halfway PC right now. It's flipping over. Okay, just to clarify with the audience, I don't mean to cut you off, brother. We're running out of time. Yeah. Just to clarify with the um, audience, are you Nazi lowrider or are you Aryan Brotherhood? No, I'm Aryan Brotherhood. I was validated in 2001 as associate and validated in 2003 as a member. Okay, what do you have to say to the youngsters out here that's uh, involved in uh, gang activity or thinking about being joining a gang? Well, a lot of these kids don't understand what the gangs actually are. Uh, when I have younger siblings like my sisters and all them, when I got out of prison, they were flying red rags. And even like my son was flying a, a, a red belt buckle and would, would have a 14 on it. You know, and uh, I had to sit him down. It was it was my fault. Uh, I didn't I didn't raise my kid right. I was always in the system, so I didn't really hold it against them. But I was pretty hard on them. But for the, for these kids out here, man, you got to make better choices. Uh, I made it all the way through the system. I made it to the top, from the, from the bottom to the top. And I can tell you that in the end, it's all about the last mistake. It's all about the last mistake. Uh, that's what's current. You know, you can do good all the way through it, but you're going to make one mistake. And that one mistake is going to undo you. You know, uh, I'm sitting here with life. Uh, if I can do a lot of things different, I would. You know, I'm missing my fucking family. I'm missing my, I'm missing my kids. I have never seen my kids raised. I don't have no relationship with them. Uh, I got people dying, you know, just this past two years, I've lost like six family members. And it's hard to sit back and not be able to say goodbye to these people, you know. You have to hold yourself responsible for that stuff, you know. Uh, I'm never going to see my mom. Uh, I'm never going to have a relationship, you know, a normal relationship. Uh, I have to deal with the way things are in here, but, but gangs ain't the way. They honestly do not care. I understand that you're looking for somebody that cares, I've been there, but it really is not that way. It really is not that way. Once you make that first mistake, you will be held accountable for it. You know, and there's no rhyme or reason to it. You will get hurt. Uh, and we're gonna use you up. We are gonna use you up. My thing is, I love getting people and putting them to work. I love being able to persuade them to think that they're gonna be a part of something just to get my, just to get my D's back, you know, because I was, I was in, the, I was in the, I was in the mix. I mean, I've had my best friend stabbed and told him straight to his face he wasn't going to be stabbed. You know, that shit, that weighs on you. You know, I've been living a lie my whole life. I've been living a lie. I've never got to be who I was meant to be. Never. You, know? you have 60 seconds remaining. I just hope maybe my story will help somebody, you know, uh, I regret everything in my life, everything. You know, I've never had a family, I've never been married. You know, I've never had any of that stuff. And that's what I thought I was getting in the gang, but it wasn't that. It wasn't that at all, you know. 